West Sacramento is 25 years old. Welcome to the Silver Jubilee for the City of West Sacramento. We incorporated in 1987 with big dreams about what our community could be, and I'm proud to report that West Sacramento is well on the way towards achieving all those dreams. 25 years ago, the communities of Broderick, Bright, West Sacramento, and Southport came together and said we want a better water, safer streets, great community, and to take advantage of the tremendous potential of our waterfront. And boy, has West Sacramento come a long way since 1987. We're so thrilled this year to be celebrating our 25th anniversary. Happy birthday, West Sacramento. It's been a great 25 years, and we're looking forward to the next 25. It is my pleasure to introduce tonight's MC. Sam Shane graduated from the University of Minnesota with a BA in journalism. He spent more than 20 years traveling across the country, working for television stations and covering major news events. He started in Duluth, Minnesota, and later in his career, he worked at KCR TV in Sacramento, KGO TV in San Francisco, at the Fox Affiliates in Seattle, and as an anchor at MSNBC before coming to his senses and assuming the role of news anchor at West Sacramento's own KOVR 13. Sam is married and the father of two kids, a boy and a girl. In his spare time, he enjoys golfing, skiing, reading, writing, and cooking. And this is, this is a clue for you in case we play Trivial Pursuit later. Sam has also written a children's book called Rocky, Rocky the Mud Hen. So join me in welcoming Sam Shane. Thank you and good evening. Uh, it's great to be here again. Uh, I've been here for the past couple of years and uh, this is really a great event. And again, West Sacramento making great strides and I know the mayor is going to be talking about that. Uh, but before we get to the mayor, I want to introduce to you our first speaker tonight. His name is Eric Flick, and uh, nearly 25 years he has spent in the grocery business. I'm going to give you a little bit of background on Eric. He started in high school as a bagger with Lucky Stores. Then he attended junior college in Fremont, California, and then he quickly advanced through Lucky's in their management program. And in 2000, he joined Grocery Outlet, and he began his path towards store ownership. Eric and his wife, Shannon, they purchased the West Sacramento Grocery Outlet in 2001 and a second store in Davis in 2011. They employ more than 45 employees between those two stores. They've been West Sacramento residents since 2001. They have three children. They are active in local schools, and they strongly believe in this community and what they see as a bright future for West Sacramento, and I think we all share that notion. Please join me right now in welcoming the 2012 Board Chair of the West Sacramento Chamber of Commerce, Mr. Eric Flick. Eric? Wow, this is what 300 people looks like, huh? That's a lot. First off, I'd like to thank everybody for your great support of the West Sacramento Chamber. Um, very important to us to, to see all this, this great diversity and mixture of folks. I mean, we've got obviously uh, so, many, so many great uh, business talents here. We have the city leadership. Uh, we have a great diversity, and, and it's really great to see so many folks coming to support the chamber and the city. Um, I'd like to take a quick moment. I know the theme tonight, obviously, is celebrating the 25 years of West Sacramento and the city cityhood and I want to take a quick moment to congratulate everybody here we we were, couldn't be prouder to be celebrating the city's anniversary of 25 years uh, pretty amazing how, how quickly time has flown and I'd also like to take a quick moment to uh, recognize some folks here in the room tonight uh, and that would be our board our board of directors for the West Sacramento Chamber we have quite a few of you in attendance tonight and if you could please rise for a moment and we'd like to recognize you uh, these folks put in a lot of time and effort bring a lot of talents a lot of talents and energy They're, these folks are really committed to the chamber. They bring resources, they bring, a, they bring assets, they bring energy to the chamber that we, we really couldn't thrive and survive the way we do without the help of these folks. And, and we're always looking for the next great uh, director. So um, thank you very much for your uh, commitment to the chamber, very important to us. 
Just a couple comments before we move on um, on some things that the chamber is, is working on and pretty darn proud of this year and, and uh, something that's been going on for a few years now and it's the collaborative relationships that the chamber of West Sacramento has, has engaged in and has not only with the city but with the community at large and, and we feel like we've got some great relationships going. Uh, we're, we're great partners in many different respects. And uh, we, we thank the city for the great partnership that we've been able to uh, establish and, and have there with the city. And, um, you know, during these economic times that we're, we're going through and the kind of the reset that we've uh, uh, all been uh, seen, that we've all seen, it's, I think, very important, especially as we, we look forward and we have uh, these different planning, uh, planning stages. To bring some of this to fruition, uh, this collaborative effort is very, very important. Um, some, some other things that, we, that we're working on and in terms of economic development, um, you know, always, always looking forward. Uh, our chamber team is going to be going back to cap to cap second year in a row now, helping support the city, the business community, and, and certainly the interest of our region uh, as we go back to Washington, D.C. And, and meet with the elected. So again, that's, that's some, uh, some great work and, and progress that I think our chamber uh, staff and directors have been working towards. Uh, Small Business Resource Center is a new partnership with the City of West Sacramento and uh, that's something that we're pretty excited about just getting started but we feel like this could be a real resource for, the, for many small businesses in West Sacramento and this will be a, a resource center that's going to have uh, the opportunity for small businesses to come and, and get all kinds of uh, useful tools and, and uh, resources in order for them to be successful. Uh, and then we're also going to continue the, the annual business walk. We partner up with uh, other other chambers and and we get out there and you know we, we get out there one-on-one -on -one and meet with businesses and we get feedback and uh, you know I think that's a an imper important personal touch that we're able to have with our business community and and certainly will continue so uh, lots of great things on our agenda this year and, and we look forward to a great year of 2012 and uh, like I said the relationships that we have with the city and the community are are all uh, going to continue moving us forward so with no further ado, I would like to reintroduce our president and CEO of the West Sacramento Chamber of Commerce, Denise Seals. So congratulations, you all scored the hottest ticket tonight. So you should probably go out and buy a lottery ticket. We're glad you're here, thanks for being here. You know, every great evening has its heroes, and this evening certainly has a trio of people that have done an incredible job. Megan Pirelli with the West Sac Chamber of Commerce. Stand up, take your dues. <laughs> Lunso with the West Sac Chamber. There you are. From the city of West Sacramento, a gentleman that should be nominated for sainthood. Ernesto Lucero from their Economic Development Department. Ernesto, stand up, bud. There you are. And here's the good news, and it wouldn't be the Chamber of Commerce if I didn't put this little plug in. You too could have an event just like this. Get out your pens, write on your program. The people you need to call, crisp catering. You want food that tastes as amazing as this? Crisp catering. They're your people. If you'd like sound that you never have to worry about, that never goes out, and has, comes with a great public announcer, Eric at Bianchi Sound. And all of this, all this cleverness that turned a city hall into this great venue, Monkey Glue Entertainment. Where's Ron? Where, oh, there you are, hi. Rock stars, these guys. And Primo Bar, no drama bartending, no drama. They come, they do their thing. It works out great. There are a number of people that we really want to say hi to and recognize and, and give a shout to. From the City of West Sacramento, if you are a commissioner with the City of West Sacramento, which, me, which means you're a resident and you dedicate your time and talents to making our community a better place, stand up, let us tell you thank you. It's 25 years, there you go. City commissioners. Right on. From Washington Unified School District, uh, the Superintendent of Schools, Dr. Dayton Gillian. Dayton?
the Dean of the Sacramento City College West Sacramento campus, Dr. Deborah Luff. Deb? Hi, Deb. Representing State Senator Lois Walk, Barnaby Butterfield. Stand up, wave. There you go. Representing State Senator Daryl Steinberg, Karen Zebron. Stand up, Karen. Say hi. <clears throat> there you go. The manager of the Port of West Sacramento, Mr. Mike Lucan. Driving economic development. City of West Sacramento Director of Community Development, Charlene Hamilton. There she is. Stand up, Charlene. City of West Sacramento Director of Public Works, Mr. Bill Panos. City of West Sacramento Director of Administrative Services, Phil Wright. Phil? I thought he was here. City of West Sacramento Director of Parks and Recreation, Bob Johnston. City of West Sacramento Chief of Police, Chief Dan Drummond. And the guy who shuddered when I said we have 300 people in this room, City of West Sacramento Fire Chief Al Terrell. <laughs> Assistant City Manager Carol Richardson. Yep. City of West Sacramento City Manager Toby Ross. Joining Mr. Ross this evening is the amazing and delightful Joe Duthie. Stand up, Joe. It's your last shot here. From Washington Unified, Washington Unified School District Board of Education, Mr. Dave Weston, Sandra Vargas, and Mary Leland. Right on. And the president of the Washington Unified School District Board of Education, Teresa Blackmer. Stand up, Teresa. Yellow County Deputy District Attorney, Clint Parrish. Representing District 2, Yolo County Supervisor Don Saylor. Let's see him. Representing District 1, Yolo County Supervisor and President of the California Association of Counties, West Sac's very own Mike McGowan. City Council Member Cindy Tuttle. <laughs> Former California State Assemblyman and current President and CEO of the SAC Metro Chamber of Commerce, Roger Nilo. <laughs> Hi, Roger, you're welcome. Roger, we want to welcome you and Dennis to the beautiful side of the river. And I, I, I know he had plans to attend, I haven't had a chance to see him yet, but representing the 9th District, California State Assemblyman Roger Dickinson. Did Roger make it yet? Not yet, but there's his chair, and he'll, he'll, he'll be here. City of West Sacramento Council Member Chris Ledesma. City of West Sacramento Council Member Mark Johannesson. City of West Sacramento Council Member Bill Kristoff. <laughs> City of West Sacramento Council Member Mayor Pro Tem and husband of the lovely Katie Viegas, Oscar Viegas. <laughs> and of course, our Mayor, City of West Sacramento Mayor Christopher Cabaldin. So you know, 2012 is quite a memorable year for our community in West Sacramento. City celebrates its 25th year of cityhood, and the West Sacramento Chamber of Commerce celebrates its 65th year. 
as a leading advocate for business in Yolo County. I'll go out there and say that. I think that's a safe bet. Yeah, I'm seeing nods. Founded in 1947 by Arthur Turner, and the chamber is based on the demonstrated truth that communities thrive when businesses thrive. The effort to form the 444th city in the state and incorporate the city of West Sacramento in 1987 was led by a committed group of chamber members and community leaders, many of which are in the room tonight. In West Sacramento, businesses thrive in a supportive environment with a responsive local government based on 65-year history of making things happen. Teamwork built our city, and Teamwork will continue to work to move it forward. Because West Sac works, because we want it to work. So welcome this evening. Have a great time. There's Assembly Member Roger Dickinson. You just, there he is. We need to make it. So as we said, welcome to the beautiful side of the river. Have a great time. We promise you won't be bored and you won't eat chicken. So thanks for being here tonight. Okay, I don't know uh, which table was the loudest last year when, when we went through this ritual, but someone will have a chance to be the loudest. We're going to introduce some of the uh, companies and sponsors here, recognizing the major sponsors for this year's State of the City event. We begin with Comstocks. Next up, Waste Management. Pacific Gas and Electric. We have a three-way tie. Ikea. I always get lost in Ikea. Community Business Bank. Oh, my. Is the ATM even open? Walmart. NorCal Beverage. All Phase Security. Very nice. Sacramento River Cats. Go Cats. Have a great year, you guys. Wells Fargo Bank. Now there's a bank, okay. And a special thanks to Eric and Shannon Flick uh, with, of course, Grocery Outlet West Sacramento for providing the wine this evening on all your tables. Now to the uh, man of the hour, the keynote speaker, of course. I want to give you a little bit of background on uh, Mayor Christopher Cabaldon. He is the first mayor directly elected by West Sacramento voters. He is currently serving his fourth elected term, his 12th year as mayor. First elected to the West Sacramento City Council in 1996, Mayor Cabaldon's work on transportation, land use, air quality, climate change, housing, and economic development has won numerous regional, state, and national awards. He chaired the Sacramento Area Council of Governments and the region's Partnership for Prosperity Project. He has put West Sacramento at the center of the region's leadership and economy. Mr. Cabaldon earned a BS in Environmental Economics from UC Berkeley and a Master of Public Policy and Administration degree from CSU Sacramento. Mayor Cabaldon has been Vice Chancellor of California's 112 community colleges he has served as an appointee in the administrations of the last four governors from both political parties, which speaks volumes in this town. He is vice chair for education at United States Conference of Mayors, where he gives West Sacramento a voice in the national table alongside America's largest cities. The Sacramento Bee says that, quote, under his leadership, the city has become one of the municipal stars of the region, end quote. A true statement indeed, but Mayor Cabaldon's latest challenge is assuming the role of instant dad to his AFS exchange student, Shamir. Hi, Shamir. I said this last year before introducing Shamir. Before introducing the mayor, there was a lot of dirt being moved on the riverside, and I said you could see which side of the river was getting it done. And there's been even more progress. But I also want to note this year that there's been a great deal of cooperation between the two cities and the mayor of this city and, and, and Mr. Johnson with regards to the new arena. And I don't think that that should be uh, um, overlooked. I think that's an incredible accomplishment. And if regions are going to do things together, you, as the mayor will know, and you'll probably talk about this, you've got to work together. And with that, I am very proud to announce 
and to introduce Mr. Christopher Cabaldon. You know, you get a little nervous when a reporter says, before I, before I bring the mayor up, I want to tell you a little bit about dirt. <laughs> Something bad was going to come. So, but thank you very much, uh, Sam, and thanks to Denise and Eric and the entire West Sacramento Chamber of Commerce, which uh, we will hear about later this evening, has been not just one of our critical partners in recent years with some of the major initiatives that have been going on in this community, but for even, be even before the period we became a city, and we wouldn't be here tonight if it weren't for the Chamber of Commerce. And it has evolved as the city has evolved. And to see marquee companies like the River Cats and Ikea and KOVR and Capital Bowl and the, the things that we are known for, along with small and medium-sized businesses of every kind in our community, come together and step up to help to, prom to promote and to serve this community is a great testament to the business community here. And so thank you to the West Sacramento Chamber of Commerce. I'd like... Each year at this event, we take a moment to recognize and honor uh, citizens and companies and civic organizations in our community uh, without whom West Sacramento wouldn't be what it is the success that we've achieved, but also who we are as a people, what we aspire to be, is driven by individuals, by companies, by community groups that care and that work to make a difference. And so tonight we are going to be presenting our four Civic Leadership Awards to four very deserving recipients. And I'd like to first invite up to make the, uh, the first presentation City Council Member Bill Kristoff to present the Civic Leadership Award for Pride. Uh, I have the honor and the privilege to present the Civic Leadership Award for Pride to a person that certainly deserves it, but is also just a very, very good friend. And he's a friend of many, many of you. His name is Mike McGowan. I, I will tell you a story. Mike and I were elected to city council. We were serving on the city council together, and there was a, an issue, and I can't even remember what the darn issue was, but there was an issue there, and Mike and I, uh, from the Diaz, we had a little spit in the spat, and I knew I was wrong. <laughs> I did, knew I was dead wrong, and I went over the next morning, and I apologize to him, and I think that if there's any one thing that really sort of cemented a friendship, it was that kind of relationship that Mike and I have, and uh, we've just been friends for a long, long time. But Mike has been a lifelong resident of West Sacramento. Uh, he and his wife, Sue, uh, they have a daughter, Becky, and they have two grandchildren. A little boy, a little girl. And uh, Mike uh, attended uh, McGeorge School of Law. He went through high school here at James Marshall and then uh, went on to uh, Sacramento State University and then went on to McGeorge, as I said earlier. And Mike then went into the United States Marine Corps. He served in Vietnam and uh, he was a a chief in a 105 mm howitzer battery so he shot the big guns and then after uh, after completing his service he finished his law school and he opened a law office in West Sacramento Mike as I said earlier too Mike was elected to the first city council that the city of West Sacramento had and he was our first mayor and he did a good job. He really brought this city along. He really did a super job. And then Mike decided to branch out a little bit, and he went to become on the, on the Yolo County Board of Supervisors. And he's been on the Board of Supervisors since 1993. I guess he's in his fifth term, fourth or fifth term. This bio I know says it, but I just got it. 
But uh, Mike, uh, the board really has a lot of issues that they, they deal with that are different than city issues. And um, Mike has uh, uh, been very, very active in the farming community. And he not only represents West Sacramento, but he also represents Clarksburg. And he has very, very good relationship with the people down there. And he brings a relationship that Clarksburg has and West Sacramento, and he tries to mend them and, 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 and fold them into one another. And he does a very, very good job of that, because I know I've met a lot of people now from Clarksburg that I probably never would have met. And um, it was just because of Mike McGowan. He uh, is a very strong advocate for the uh, preservation of agricultural lands. Uh, he's, uh, he promotes and enhances open space. He is a uh, member, well, matter of fact, now he is president of the Supervisors Association statewide. And that's a very big deal. That, 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 that's a big thing. Mike was uh, elected, like I said, Mike was elected president of California Association of Counties, California State Association of Counties, and chief lobbying arm, is, is the chief lobbying arm for the 58 counties um, involved uh, within the state of California. Other duties that Mike has, he's on the port, Matter of fact, he is the chair of the Port Commission now, Delta Protection Commission, and that's a very important commission for us in West Sacramento because we are part of the Delta. And there are some major, major issues that will um, affect the city of West Sacramento and the Delta. He's on the Yolo County Transportation Board, Triver, uh, Tribal Intergovernmental um, Relations, the Native American Gaming workshop chair, Yolo County Air Quality Management, and it just goes on and on and on. Other special districts that he has is, is a number of the reclamation districts. Mike's very involved with flood, water, and those issues, and uh, he has a number of reclamation districts that are really sort of under his jurisdiction and boards that he sits on. Hi, Mike. I'm really excited to be able to have a chance to talk about you, but I'll be careful. Mike, I can't think of anyone who is more deserving than you are to win a Civic Pride Award in West Sacramento. You have been a great ambassador for your community and for the whole county, and you are a very talented representative and a very good example of someone who should be in government. Now sometimes you're a little long-winded, but then that, you know, is something that all of us have to face. Mike, you know that I've known you for over 20 years. Uh, we have served on the Board of Supervisors together and we've worked on many projects. I really think that you are, to be serious about it, a really important advocate for your community and for all of Yolo County. You have done a tremendous job in whatever you have undertaken. Look at what you have done. Getting the River Cats to come to West Sacramento and Yolo County was a real coup. Uh, you have re helped revitalize the port. Uh, look at the beautiful buildings here in West Sacramento. I think that it is really, a, to your credit, that everything is going so well in this beautiful town of West Sacramento. I'd like to finish off by saying that I really respect you because you've always looked for the possibilities for making a better West Sacramento and a better Yolo County. And whether it took going to DC on the red eye quite a few times as I recall. Now I have to admit sometimes you were playing back there with your band, but you were also working for Yolo County and for West Sacramento and you will travel out of the country to try to get trade for the uh, port. I think it was really a, a worthwhile trip that you took. Um, fortunately, you didn't have to take a slow boat to China. You got back here to help us out. But Mike, I really uh, admire you a great deal for the hard work that you have done to represent this community. Mike, 
To me, you are the best, and you represent the pride of West Sacramento. Happy anniversary, West Sacramento. My name is Matt Rexrode, and I have the privilege of serving with Mike McGowan on the Board of Supervisors and have done that for the last five years. Uh, my understanding is he's getting a community award tonight for his community service to the city of West Sacramento over many decades worth of service to this community. Um, and when a lot of people think of West Sacramento, they think of kind of that feisty attitude that caused them to incorporate. McGowan's feistiness is, is demonstrated in a lot of different ways, and I have a lot of personal experience with that. I was actually happily the mayor of Woodland, California until um, I got this call one day from Supervisor McGowan who encouraged me to run for supervisor. And I told him no, I was happy being on the Woodland City Council. He told me he'd be right there with me the whole way as I ran for supervisor, which was true right up until he endorsed my opponent and uh, was there until the very end. Some other great stories about McGowan and his feistiness. Probably my favorite was when he declared a pox on the entire house of the legislature, which was wonderful. Other th the other highlight, are there, and there are several from our Board of Supervisors meeting, when um, Tank, the Transmission Authority of Northern California, came through and they were uh, placing their power lines throughout California. Um, as the meeting was about to start, I was upset about the way they were placing their, their power lines. So was Jim Provenza. And right before the meeting started, Mike walked over and he said, hey, keep your powder dry. Keep your powder dry. Keep it, keep it steady. So we were all good with that. And everything was going along fine in the meeting until it was McGowan's turn. And McGowan, when he had his chance to speak about Tank, he said, um, and I will never forget this, he said, um, what Tank is going to do is like when somebody is about to do something objectionable on your front lawn. And when that happens, you don't just say no, you go out there and you hit him in the face with a rake. And um, when he finished being the chair of the board that year, uh, most people get a... Uh, a gavel or a plaque or whatever, but Jim Provenza and the rest of the board presented him with this rake uh, to symbolize his feistiness and um, not exactly something you'd want to get hit in the face with. And for those of you who think Mike's uh, feistiness has just been a recent thing, yesterday when I knew that I was coming here to film this, I um, was in a meeting with Mike and he's kind of one of these old Marines and dementia starting to set in and a number of other issues. And so I texted him with a friendly little reminder to, to wake up because he was clearly falling asleep and dozing off in the meeting. And his response to me, which I've saved here on my phone, and I don't know if you can see it in the camera, but his, it says, screw you uh, with a little devil face. And this was from yesterday. So clearly his um, feistiness hasn't abided in his later years as he's uh, uh, slowly fading into dementia and, um, but still doing a fabulous job for the people of Yolo County. Mike, sincerely, you're an absolutely wonderful human being and a great, great representative for the people of West Sacramento and the county of Yolo, and I thank you for your service and honor you here tonight. Cheers. Semper Fidelis. Hey, McSoup. Uh, congratulations on this honor tonight. We're all very proud of you. What a lot of folks may not know about you is that beyond all your political contributions, for example, being the first mayor of West Sacramento, I think it's like almost 20 years now you've been a county supervisor, uh, well beyond being a great husband and father and grandfather, uh, and even beyond being Mike McGowan, the life of the party in West Sacramento, um, what folks may not know is that you're also a phenomenal musician and that you give back to the community what little free time you have left after all that stuff that you do for West Sac and the county, you give back through your music. For those of you who know you, the bottom line is Mike McGowan, better known as Lefty in the band circles, you are a drum slut. You haven't seen a drum kit that you don't like, but that's to our advantage because not only here regionally, but throughout the country, you've used music as a way to break through barriers. A lot of times words and actions and politics, they won't be able to communicate or be able to tell our story, but through your music, and again, across the country you've done this, not just regionally, you're able to use your music to tell our story to our advantage here in the community. And for that, I truly applaud you. You know, the opposite of pride is humility, and it's truly through your humility your giving, your unselfishness, Mike, that we have all benefited in this community. It's your humble service is why you're receiving this proud recognition. And for that, I applaud you. Uh, on behalf of your bandmates, uh, we love you. We're 
honored and privileged to call you uh, our friend. And I want to thank you. Thank you for your service to this community. But I want to thank you most of all for not kicking me out of the band. And we'll see you at band practice. We love you. Congratulations. Hey, West Sacramento, congratulations on uh, our 25th anniversary. The only thing older than Mike McGowan's service to Yolo County is the city itself. Happy 25th birthday, West Sac. Thank you very much. I'm, I, am, I am truly humbled by this. I, I knew this was going to happen. I was trying to figure out, you know, really how do I, how I felt. And I think at the end of the day, it's a feeling of gratitude. So um, yeah, I'm going to kill Matt Rexroad when I see him. But, um, <laughs> but other than that, and, and Cindy Tuttle, uh, you know, as, uh, I was the first mayor. She was the first woman mayor. And then Christopher Cabaldin was the first oboe player mayor. So we have several firsts here in the city of West Sacramento. Um, thank you. This has been more fun than a grown-up deserves. I really do appreciate this. Um, you, know, you work your whole life to do something and you don't really think about it or keep score or keep track and pretty soon you look up and you realize that uh, the time is going by and you've done a few things that you're proud of and uh, to, so to be the Civic Leadership Award for Pride for this year is truly something that I treasure and I really appreciate. Thank you, West Sacramento, for letting me do this. It's been my, my privilege. All right, if we could get uh, Mr. McGowan and Mr. Kristoff to go in another room and take a picture while I let the other council members and awardees know, please do not read the entire biography. <laughs> We're on a schedule here. <laughs> Next, I'd like to invite to the podium uh, City Council Member Chris Ledesma, the newest member of our City Council, to present the Civic Leadership Award for Prosperity. All right, they gave me two pages, so uh, I will not read both pages, but, you know, uh, welcome everybody, hello, uh, great to be here with you. Um, it is fitting on our 25th anniversary uh, of this great city um, that we honor tonight. I'm, I'm pleased to be up here to award the Civ Civic Leadership for Prosperity Award, and it's fitting that we have it with, uh, with a company and an industry where this really great city was founded in agriculture. So. Um, I'm pleased to present to you uh, this award that goes to Farm Fresh to You. <laughs> farm Fresh to You is a second generation organic farm that's got to start in, in uh, the coastal ranges Cape Hay Valley, uh, about 90 miles uh, northeast of San Francisco, just east of here, uh, or west of here. The farm was founded in 1976 by the current owner's parents, Kathleen Barsati and Martin Barnes. And uh, they did it in the early stages of the organic foods movement. So uh, there's a lot to be said about the pioneering spirit that these folks had. Uh, their, uh, the brothers Noah, Freeman, and Thaddeus currently run the day-to-day -day operations. And uh, they've become quite successful. Unfortunately, uh, Kathleen, uh, who started this, uh, this farm and, and um, the start of this, started this community, um, uh, supported agricultural operation back in 1992. Uh, she started it, which is a membership program. You send your uh, produce out to members that sign up on, on it. She did it in 1992, but instead of just dropping off in areas, she began to do it at, at homes, which became a unique operation, and that's how they got started. Unfortunately, Kathleen uh, died and from breast cancer after a courageous battle in, in 2000, and her sons took over the operation from there. Uh, in 2007, they began to expand, and they started to begin farming in the Imperial, Imperial Valley, Valley in Southern California. And uh, they, that allowed them to get the farm fresh to you to the Los Angeles area and expanded their produce to all those customers there. In 2010, they came here looking to uh, the heart of the agricultural world in California. And they bought a building here to increase its cold storage capacity and offer space uh, for their staff, office space for their staff. Today, the company is one of the largest CSAs in the United States, delivering farm fresh produce to over 40,000 homes a month. 
In addition to its farm, uh, farm Fresh Home to You home and office produce delivery service, the company also sells produce at several year-round farmers markets, partners with produce wholesalers, grocers, and Bay Area restaurants. And if you haven't been to the Ferry Building in San Francisco, they have a retail store there. So please join me in, in congratulating Farm Fresh to you. I think we're going to show the video. Well, I think this region is really lucky to have uh, Farm Fresh to You uh, as a great example of how a family farm uh, can go from a small scale and through multiple generations to become uh, one of the biggest CSA distributors in California. Uh, their ability to aggregate and distribute food here in the region and then throughout California is a great example of what we're trying to do at the Sacramento Area Council of Government. Their aggregation facility in West Sacramento is exactly what we're trying to promote uh, through our project. A way for small growers to get their food into one place and get it out to multiple markets. Uh, Farm Fresh to You is also uh, a great uh, community partner. Uh, they are providing a lot of food to the Sacramento Food Bank and that partnership continues to develop. They're also providing training to beginning farmers through the Center for Land-Based Learning's Farm Academy. And they also bring students and their families out to the farm to help them learn about how food is grown and how agriculture works. I think that Farm Fresh to You is uh, a great asset in West Sacramento and uh, one that will be a great player for the next 25 years. Happy anniversary, West Sacramento. We're very happy today to be uh, celebrating the success of another one of our West Sacramento businesses, Farm Fresh to You. They're a great success story here in West Sacramento. Uh, like the port, they uh, are responsible for shipping agricultural goods in and out of the region. And last year we were uh, very fortunate to have uh, the Secretary of Agriculture uh, Vilasek visit the port of West Sacramento. And not only did we uh, have the uh, fortune of having him come to the port and see our operation, see how we move rice and other products in and out of the port, but immediately thereafter he was able to visit Farm Fresh to You and see how uh, that business has grown from a small business here in Yolo County that serves our agricultural sector to a great uh, employer and company uh, that promotes economic development here in the region. Happy 25th anniversary West Sacramento. Yeah, the city of West Sacramento plays a very strategic role in our mission to transform agriculture in America by connecting small local farms directly to the consumers. So thank you everybody for your support and we look forward to a good 25 years. I was on that visit with Secretary Vilsack and uh, these, these guys seem quiet and unassuming at the podium, they were rock stars. And Secretary Vilsack said afterwards it was one of the high points of his national tour across the country was uh, how impressive Farm Fresh to You and the leadership team there is. And so uh, I, I want to you know, second the award uh, because it does represent, and we'll talk about this in a little bit, uh, a major initiative for the city of West Sacramento and the region in putting food back at the center of our economy and our lives. Next, I'd like to invite to the podium City Council Member Mark Johannesson, who's going to present our Civic Leadership Award for service. In uh, 2002, West Sacramento was very fortunate to have found and hired Toby Ross as our city manager. Toby came to us with extensive experience and extensive background, including master's and a PhD uh, from UC Berkeley and a BA degree from UC Santa Barbara, and also having held various university positions. He also came to us with substantial uh, practical experience as well. He was a city manager for Park City, Utah, a world-class resort community that played host to approximately 40% of the events during the 2002 Winter Olympics. Toby presided over this full-service resort of city for more than 13 years and was named Manager of the Year by the Utah League of Cities and Towns on statewide growth and planning issues. His service to West Sacramento has also not gone without notice. 
Toby has aptly managed our city during the last decade where we've seen a tremendous transformation into a city envied in, the, in the, the region for its ability to implement programs and projects, which have improved not only the competitiveness of our city, but also the quality of life for residents and our workers. He has been at the helm of a city whose local government is widely viewed as one that works in the region. Some of the major accomplishments during his tenure include major retail development in the north and south ends of town, which includes uh, bringing Ikea, Walmart, Nugget, and Target to town. The development of the city's downtown into a vibrant government center, encompassing the city hall, the Arthur F. Turner County Library, a satellite facility for Sacramento City College, and also our community center right across the street, and many more. Toby advanced and developed the city's aggressive flood protection plan as well as major infrastructure projects in support of the Bridge District, which is the urban riverfront development south of the Tower Bridge that you all see driving into town. Toby has also served as the executive director of the Port of West Sacramento, which continues a path to become a green and economically viable port compatible with its residential neighbors. Toby has a lot on his plate over the last several years, and he has performed exceptionally well. It has been through his steady guidance that West Sacramento has been able to weather the national and regional financial situation. And West Sacramento remains in good financial shape and is ready for a very, very bright future. I'm very proud, along with the mayor and my colleagues on city council, to be able to present this well-deserved award for Toby for service. And this is the year of the Toby. More to come. Toby. <laughs> Good evening, everyone. I'm Chris Ledesma, the newest member of our city council here in West Sacramento. And as the newest member of the council, one of the first things that uh, came apparent to me was the leadership that the city has provided from Toby Ross. And so, Toby, congratulations on this most deserving award after the years you've served our city, the years you've served in leading our community, uh, leading our agenda, leading our staff through some very good times and some very tough times and challenging times. Certainly, this, is, uh, this award is, is really deserving. Again, as the newest member, I've noticed that from the beginning, uh, noticed your ability to work with all of us, to support all of us, and the things we want to do to be effective uh, members of our council. So I want to thank you, and also want to thank you for your, your personal support. Um, I think leadership uh, really transcends just what you do on the, between the horns of the day, and uh, you have certainly been a supporter of this community, a supporter of each of us. Um, and trying to further our community. So with that, I just wanted to say thank you. Congratulations on this award. Certainly we mark our 25th anniversary of our city with uh, this deserving award for our city manager. So thank you and I wish you well. More than a decade ago, it was my great pleasure to introduce to the business community the then new city manager, Toby Ross. As part of my research, I discovered that Toby had a degree in geography and so with tongue in cheek, I announced that this is the man that would put the city on the map. Little did we know that, in fact, that's exactly what he would do. Because you see, Toby is a gardener. And like all good gardeners, he looked around at what appeared to be barren ground, saw some star heritage plants blooming, patiently chipped away, and moved a rail spur, and the bridge district bloomed. He then added a few amenities. And we have the West Cap Streetscape, the West Sacramento Farmers Market, the Community Center Complex, and a defined city core. And like all good gardeners, he realized the time comes that occasionally you have to prune back severely. And as a result, he streamlined city government and enabled the community of West Sacramento to survive what ended up to be the economic version of a hard freeze. He created and encouraged an environment to attract and support businesses to West Sacramento. And so Toby, from the business community, thank you. Enjoy your retirement. Know that the fruits of your labors will endure and impact generations of West Sacramentans. 25 years of cityhood, woohoo! Congratulations, West Sac. Over the last decade, West Sacramento has seen a transformation, really transforming the city into a shining star of the region. 
and it's really viewed in the region as a city government that actually works for its citizens and the business community. Toby has been at the helm of our city for the last decade and really deserves credit for that transformation and also being the steady hand during the last several years of financial uncertainty. Uh, West Sacramento is now celebrating his 25th year of anniversary. Um, the city should all recognize Toby for his dedication and service to the city. We could not have done it without him. And Toby has really been, uh, with his experience and expertise, has really been a valuable assistance to council in implementing their vision uh, in a very pragmatic way. So Toby, congratulations. It's a real honor to be on a stage where Mike McGowan has been. Um, you know, he was, he was one of the first people to contact me even when I was back in Park City. He sent me a note and he said, I really want to welcome you to my town, uh, Christopher, um, and uh, don't screw it up. And so I, I've done my best not to screw it up, and uh, I've had a lot of people helping me, and, and I, I have to say that the city council and really the, all of the city council members since I've been here have been an absolute pleasure to work with. They've had the vision and the good, good sense to know what their role was, know what our role was, and to get it all done. And you can't do it without a, uh, the political leadership that they've provided. And then a tremendous staff. Um, it's, it's amazing that a little community like ours in a pretty good sized region can track the best and the brightest and we've really done that and it's been great to work with all of those people and then I want to thank my wife uh, she stood by me for 40 years in this crazy business and uh, in the, I don't know how she's done it but I want to thank you all thank you Tough couple months as we as we can, as we say goodbye to Toby a few times, um, and I, I know I asked the council members not to read their entire things, but uh, we don't have a strong mayor form of government here, and they do whatever they want to. So I apologize, but that's democracy. So next, I'd like to invite, and that's a warning shot actually for our next presenter, our mayor pro tem Oscar Villegas, who's going to present our civic leadership award for community. I got it. <clears throat> Subtlety. Christopher's so good at being subtle. All right, so it's a great pleasure for me to be up here and to recognize the next uh, recipient. It's the Civic Leadership Award for Community. So congratulations to the uh, West Sacramento Farmers Market. Give him a big hand. <clears throat> so rather than going through and reading the entire thing, I'll just sum it up. The, uh, last year's Farmers Market, it was directly across the street. Uh, if you didn't participate, if you didn't even know it happened, all I can say to you is, loser. <laughs> and that's it. I'll, I'll read a couple of things that they did do very quickly. Um, so the market opened up last year. For those who did not know, uh, it, it was a huge success. It, uh, it, it met all of its goals. Uh, the first market in the region to be a zero waste market, which meant that 97% of the waste that was generated in the market was diverted to landfills through recycling and composting. That's a big deal. Uh, 25 certified farmers, 14 were from Yolo County, six different restaurants, three from West Sac, three from Yolo County. Uh, over 2,700 pounds of tomatoes were sold, 3,600 3, pounds of uh, stone fruit were sold. Uh, so you get the picture, it was very successful. Uh, next year is going to be even bigger and better. So mark in your calendar, uh, 2012, it's going to be, uh, excuse me, this year is going to be even bigger and better. Mark in your calendar, May 3rd. Uh, put it in your calendar, that's the day it's going to kick off again this year. So congratulations, and I think we have a video, is that right? All right. Hi, my name is Dan Gannon, the owner of Humble Roots Community Supported Agriculture and an organic farmer here in West Sacramento. I just want to let you know that the West Sacramento Farmers Market 
is preserving the agricultural heritage of our city. It's restoring agrarian values to our community and it's providing economic opportunities for new farmers to make a decent living. For every dollar you spend at the farmer's market, it stays right here at home and it multiplies into several dollars spent in our community. Humble Roots and the City of West Sacramento Farmer's Market are bringing the farm back home. Happy anniversary, City of West Sacramento. Keep up the good work. I'd like to congratulate and to thank the Chamber and the City of West Sacramento for creating the West Sacramento Farmer's Market. Congratulations on your award for civic leadership. Thank you for creating a space that was green and sustainable, allowing us to have a place to purchase fresh produce and baked goods, to provide wonderful entertainment, and a convening place for the city. It was a place to gather information, to catch up with friends, to meet new people, and I really enjoyed it, and I know that members of the community did as well. So thank you very much, and congratulations. Happy 25th anniversary, West Sacramento. This is the Ran at the Market. I'm sad to report that the market is closing down for a, lot, for a while, and then you reopen in May. We had a great year at the market, tried not, lots of new things, made lots of new friends, and I, I'm just wishing that this, that this day would never have come. But everybody knows that nothing lasts forever. So, see you next May. This is Steve Anna at the market, sadly signing off. Thanks for the award, and to come to the market in May. Also, tune in to Divan at the Market on YouTube and the West Sac and the Farmers Market website. So, just really quick, um, it's hard to follow Divan at the Market, but. Um, First of all, I know Denise isn't up here because she thinks that she's up here too much tonight, but obviously she was a huge part of this. Um, she was part of it when it started three years ago before I was even part of the chamber. So big thank you to Denise and anyone else that was a part of kind of the steering committee that made this really happen. Um, we want to thank our partners at the city, at Los Rios, at the library, our friends at PD that kept us safe, Marty. Um, and everyone that came to the market, it was just really nice to see a community place downtown that everyone could come to and show off this new beautiful downtown area. So thank you all for coming if you came last year and this year. Let's make it bigger and better. It starts May 17th. I know May 3rd, everyone's really excited, but a couple more weeks. So May 17th is going to be our first um, market this year. So come out. Thank you. So the state of West Sacramento. Before I get too far, let me just cut to the chase. We're not bankrupt, and Rivercat's opening weekend is this weekend. If you get, any, if you get bored at all during the speech, uh, you can order your tickets through your smartphone for this weekend at Rayleigh Field. We certainly encourage you to do that. You know, 25 years ago, the city of West Sacramento was born. And today, with all we've heard tonight, all we've seen, and all we go by, walk and drive and bicycle by every day, it seems so obvious. But it wasn't obvious for more than a century after the first uh, settlers came to this little burg on this side of the Sacramento River. And in fact, it was so not obvious that 60% of the voters here rejected the idea of incorporating as a city in 1968 and again in 1972. It wasn't obvious really even as an idea. Uh, at the time, there hadn't been any new cities formed in this region in decades. Uh, and Loomis wasn't really the touchstone uh, for communities like ours to think about what we might become. And in fact, it was the example that we set here in West Sacramento that led to what became a cascade of incorporations across our region, with Citrus Heights and then Elk Grove and then Rancho Cordova being inspired by what was happening on this side of the river. But 25 years ago, starting a new city meant diving into these uncharted, treacherous waters and doing battle with your county government. And the city wasn't created out of some idea that we wanted to be a nuclear-free zone. It wasn't like Vernon in L.A. trying to create a tax haven. It wasn't any of those things. East Yolo's people 
were a pragmatic, a, a, a pragmatic and practical lot. Right? 35 years ago, we were governed by 16 different special districts, plus the county. Fire protection alone was covered by five different districts here in our community. And that makes it hard. If we came together, who was going to have control? If we merged 28 or 50 different tax zones together, who would end up paying more and who would end up paying less? And we weren't even a single community within all those special districts, um, like we are today with distinct neighborhoods. Back then, those weren't distinct neighborhoods. They were completely separate places. Back then, you might have described East Yolo as a loose confederation of independent and mutually suspicious places uh, that happened to be next to each other. And our first two communities in the, uh, Washington, uh, the, neighbor, the oldest neighborhood in the city, uh, and Bright, weren't even really connected to each other by any urban development until the 50s. And even 25 years ago when we incorporated, when trains were on the mainline UP track, th those two neighborhoods, those two communities were walled off es essentially from the rest of what was then called West Sacramento. So the voters er earlier on after they rejected cityhood created the East Yolo Community Services District partly to wrest control of our local water supply and our water system away from the high prices, the neglect, and the pretty crappy quality of Citizens Utility, which is a private uh, water company out of Connecticut. That was part of the reason, and partly because residents and businesses in their hearts and in their daily lives knew that this kind of Articles of Confederation system was not working, and what we really needed was a real constitution. We needed to come together as a real place. So, but that formation of the East Yolo Community Services District started a march towards more and more and more consolidations of these local districts. And it became pretty clear that cityhood really was the natural outcome. But we didn't succeed until we realized that our prosperity, our destiny, depended on overcoming, all, overcoming our historic divisions. And it helped to have the gentle but ironic push of Proposition 13 which, because of its cap on tax rates, threatened uh, several of those special districts with bankruptcy if they didn't come together. So I say we're both aspirational and quite practical. Today, it does seem obvious. We're the cool, get it done, all pulling together city that just seems to be making a new improvement every five minutes all over the place. But it wasn't obvious back then that that would be the outcome. After the first two incorporation measures uh, tanked at the polls, the county finally rewrote the, what was at that time a 25-year-old general plan. And Art Edmonds, who was our county supervisor at the time, insisted that that general plan be led by people in the local community. And so a local East Yolo committee was, was uh, convened to put it together. And the ambition of that general plan was astonishing. If you read it today, it looks like it could be our general plan today. Uh, even though, well, except for the part that it's written with a manual typewriter and there's lots of cross outs in it and all of that, but, uh, and there's no good pictures. But other than that, it could be our general plan right now. It called for bike routes on every new street. Uh, it called for quadrupling the number of parks, albeit at the, at the time there were only two. So it called for eight parks total. And it called for a fixed rail streetcar system. Uh, that original general plan had all the ambition that we have today about what our community might be. But despite that vision um, of people in our community, like Bill Christoph's dad, who was on the Community Service Board of Directors and who was on the general plan committee that the county put together, the harsh reality was that none of that was really coming to be reality. This wasn't the place that got things done, and it was a community littered with broken promises and failed dreams because of a government that didn't work. We had only four parks at, by that point, and not a single one of them was in Bright or in Broderick. We wanted bridges, we wanted transit, we wanted river access, we wanted shopping, we wanted a complete community. But there didn't seem to be a path to get there. We were so divided amongst ourselves and so neglected by our masters in county government that we had almost no reason to be confident that we could get anything accomplished. So it wasn't obvious at the time, uh, but there was this special, even then, West Sacramento blend of kind of brash dreams unrealistic dreams and hard-nosed pragmatism that finally came together in 1986. And what was different then? Well, lots. All those mergers and consolidations, the fire districts all got put together, the CSD came into being. All of those uh, didn't make cityhood inevitable, but they did make it seem less scary. Uh, we always wanted to be independent from Davis and Woodland, but the unknowns and the mutual mistrust within our own communities had kept us from the finish line. But now, in 1986, we were ready. The Incorporation Committee and all of the volunteers, some of whom are here tonight, worked their tails off 
And they, uh, they made clear what was at stake uh, for the community, not just of what we could accomplish together as a city, but also the consequences of failure. Uh, and so they won a, the, the David and Goliath battle against citizen, citizens' utility, thanks to Mr. Christoph's dad and many, many others in this community who fought hard and took it all the way up to the courts. And that provided a little bit more confidence and inspi inspiration that maybe we could pull this off. And so by this point, cityhood started to seem like the solution to everything. And at that point, 72% uh, of the voters in 1986, 72% of the voters in Bright and Broderick and West Sacramento and the three people living in South Board at the time voted to incorporate <laughs> because it was finally obvious. And uh, so as we think about this in our Silver Jubilee year, we have a lot of reasons to reflect on the last 25 years and how did it all turn out. And it's, it, it's uh, you know, we only have one evening together to go through this, but how it turned out is something astonishing, even, even, even today. So let's take a, just a quick tour, and maybe we start at the north part of the city at the water treatment plant, um, the Bright Bend water treatment plant, because water was one of the major drivers of this community coming together from the very beginning. Uh, and that battle against citizens' utility, the battle to move from groundwater to water that you could actually see through uh, and, 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 and get from the river that was clean and healthy was a major defining moment for this city. And since in that 25-year period, we have built a state-of-the-art uh, water treatment plant and system that is the envy certainly of the rest of the county uh, and many, many others. And so I, I think we checked that one off, that the, the goal of 25 years ago to get us good, clean, reliable, affordable uh, water and guarantee those rights in the future, none. Second, fire. We, wanted to, we had to uh, move towards increasing consolidation of the fire districts. When we had five fire districts in town, uh, 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 the, the level of service that was able to be provided in Broderick was well below uh, the standards that even insurance companies were willing to insure for. Uh, and today we have one of the top fire departments in the region uh, with all the latest equipment, with, as I've said before, a station, station 45 that can be seen from space. We have a top quality uh, fire department that serves everyone in this community. Police. At the time, uh, we, were a we were the number one customer of the Yolo County Sheriff's Department, but our community wanted our community wanted control of its own law enforcement. It was one of the top priorities of that early city council with Mike McGowan and Bill Kristoff, and they made some tough decisions to say we want our own police department. And again, today we have a high-quality professional police department that provides a, tremendous, a tremendously better level of service and quality of service than we could ever have imagined uh, prior to incorporation. So police and fire protection, done. And then you think about, and I was reading to second, or, yeah, second graders last month for Dr. Seuss Day, and you think, oh, the places we've made uh, in these 25 years together. Uh, Rose Orchard, not, not too far away from the water treatment plant, an old orchard that today is the home of Ikea and uh, Home Depot and uh, for the fire department, folks who are here, uh, Beach Hut Deli, um, and also uh, you know, lots of food and now uh, more furniture. It has become, uh, it, it's been, it become the answer to our community's dream that we have more retail. And not retail because we want the sales taxes, although th those are nice too, and please shop there, but because we wanted to be a whole place. We wanted to be a complete community where you didn't just live here and then go somewhere else to do all your stuff, but this was a, a place that you could live your life in. And so River Point Marketplace is a major marker of the success of this community, the sort of retail investment that never had occurred while we were under the thumb of the county. Southport. Uh, Clint Eastwood was there a couple of months ago. I guess I hear he's been here a couple of times in the Southport Town Center. I don't know why. I have not actually talked to him, but several residents have reported Clint Eastwood sightings at the Southport Town Center many, many times, and he's not the only one. It is because of the Club Pheasant as an anchor. It is one of, those, it is one of the places in the community that surprises outsiders when they first arrive, or folks who left West Sacramento because you were just never going anywhere 25 years ago and came back and to visit relatives or to see their old, their old stomping grounds, and they are amazed at what has occurred in Southport. The quality of that place is a new style of suburb uh, and a real community that exists in, in Southport uh, with all of the great amenities and services and natural heritage that is there. Uh, Southport is something that we're very, very proud of. Uh, the Washington area of our city, the oldest part of our, of our community, which for generations 
had no, virtually no investment uh, by the county in its infrastructure and in its services. Uh, today is a thriving quarter. Uh, Washington Square is one of the hot spots of the community, uh, consistently winning awards for being one of the best neighborhoods in the region. Uh, and I think we're all very proud of what's occurring in Washington and what the potential is there as we now deploy a $400,000 grant that we have won from the U.S. Department, Department of Housing and Urban Development to take it even further and to extend the benefits of, of our development activities in the Washington neighborhood to the whole community. The port. The port has been an ongoing struggle, but it, is this, it was the incorporation of the city that ultimately led to local control of the port of West Sacramento. Uh, and, in, and I want to acknowledge and thank uh, Mr. Nilo and Mr. Dickinson, who as members of the Board of uh, Supervisors in Sacramento helped uh, this, this city uh, get wrestle control of its destiny at the port, which is a central part of our own economic life and our environmental life. And we, has, as Mr. Johannesson has said, we've been committed to making it an environmentally sustainable and, and responsible port and making it a centerpiece of economic activity for our community and for our region, and it's happening. Our downtown, this whole area around us, one of the major drivers of, of the incorporation effort was to say we need to be, have, be a real city that Broderick, Bright, Southport, and West Sacramento can come together in must have a downtown. And today we have a tremendous uh, downtown that, that we've created, not out of nothing, but pretty darn close. Uh, and the, the college and the library, the county's investment in the library, and I've, because this is the 25th anniversary of us, of our war of independence against the county. Sometimes I, I may sound as though I don't love the county. I love the county. Today's county, under the leadership of Mike McGowan, has been an incredible supporter. And their, work, their investment in the library, the community, Los Rios' investment in the community college, the community center, the transit center with the Olo bus, this city hall, the streetscape improvements that SACOG have, has helped us with. Downtown has become an amazingly vibrant place. Capitol Bowl with its private sector improvements. The Parkside projects just down the street, which was named this year as one of the top regional projects by their business journal. Chase Bank, which just opened its bank and is already uh, making loans to, to new companies and businesses here in our community. The farmer's market, the concerts, the hip hop slams, the Zumba classes. West Capitol is hopping in a way that we, uh, that we had hoped for, but never really seriously dreamed of. It has become a reality. And then there's the waterfront, the place that everyone in this community knew long before incorporation was our greatest asset. But we'd never been able to figure out how to be able to take advantage of it. And in the last 25 years, starting with the Ziggurat Building and the Riverwalk and Rayleigh Field and the improvements in the Bridge District and the Calsters headquarters and all the energy that its employees are, are, are bringing, the renovation of the Tower Bridge, the sustained investments in the riverfront are now clear from every part of the freeway system, from the river itself, from the street, walking, biking. You can see now what is about to uh, explode onto the, into the Bridge District and what we're building on what's already been occurring in the area just north of that. So waterfront, I think we can, we can uh, uh, maybe not get a full check mark on, but for 25 years we've made a tremendous amount of progress. And then there's the neighborhoods. Uh, because sometimes we celebrate the gigantic projects, the Ikeas, the Rayleigh Fields, the Calsters, the Ziggurats. But why, why we incorporated was because we wanted to improve and celebrate the places in which we live. And the neighborhoods of West Sacramento have done remarkably well. This is not a city that gentrified itself and said, we're going to bulldoze our existing places in order to make something shiny and new. The point of this is to improve the quality of life for all of our residents and all of our neighborhoods. And thanks to redevelopment and the commitments that the city has made over the last 25 years, that has happened and our neighborhoods are stronger than ever. And our investment in people. Uh, that, that one of the reasons we came together as a community was to say we want a place that families can thrive together. That kids want to stay once they are legally able to leave if they, if they want to. We want them to stay in West Sacramento. And we want a place that seniors can live and thrive uh, and, be, and so that the full range of an extended family can be in one community together, living together, enjoying life together, enjoying their community. And we, we are on the road to achieving that. And so I have to say it's been a remarkable 25 years. And it, maybe it's a little bit of hubris, but I would say not since the founding of Rome has incorporation <laughs> been so transformative. I mean, other cities have come into being, but the level of change and transformation that has occurred because of the, our incorporation 25 years has been so profound, so total, while yet still being us. When you, when you listen to, to Mike McGowan or to others who were here at that moment and here long before, uh, this is still the West Sacramento that they loved. Uh, the volunteers, the activists from the incorporation committee, 
from the chamber who were engaged at the time would still, if they had been in Mars for 25 years and returned today, they would still recognize this place as the one that they loved and the one that they hoped to improve. And that, I think, is incredible. So, so how, do, how do we pull it all off? Well, I'm, uh, why, or why are we so extraordinary that even the most ardent of proponents of, incorporations couldn't, of incorporation couldn't have guessed we would get this far? Well, I'll, I'll leave the entire story to the, to the historians, but I think you've already met some of the reasons tonight why West Sacramento's story has been so remarkable. You know, a lot of new cities, when they first come into being, they stay in battle mode. They just had won their war against the county in order to become independent, and they can't get out of the mindset of, we are fighting everyone. Others solved the one or two reasons why they came into being. They became a city to do, you know, to fix their street or to, to you know, get rid of their, their, their sheriff or whatever. And then they get settled into a really comfortable status quo, and nothing ever happens again. Not us. West Sacramento got right, right down to work at incorporation, focusing first on the basics to get them absolutely right, and then charting what was a ridiculous plan to become, and I, this is one of our favorite quotes even now, the model that was on our letterhead you know, 15, 20 years ago, the premier city of the Sacramento Valley. And uh, I, I, ridiculous at the time because it seemed so audacious and so um, unlikely. And ridiculous now because being the premier city of just the Sacramento Valley seems so like yesterday. Uh, um, we've just, we've set our sights higher. Um, it all could have been really different, but the incorporation leaders and the supporters and the chamber members and the faith community uh, folks all brought this missionary zeal to the founding of the city that infected the whole effort as we, as we got underway and got to business. And so we owe a part of our celebration of, this, of these 25 years to the everyday leaders who made incorporation happen and those same leaders who then were committed to doing it exactly right. Passionate leaders who always put West Sac first and second and third and only. People like Art Edmonds and Clark Cameron and that first uh, set of critical city council members and planning commissioners and others who set the tone and the standard for the next generation to come. People like J Bill Kristoff, who along with his dad represent an unbroken line of elected service in our community spanning almost four decades. Uh, yes. And people like our honoree tonight, Mike McGowan. And I, want, and I want to talk a little bit about Mike because he's the honoree, but also because, to me, Mike represents a, a whole uh, a set of community folks in, our, in this city uh, and their values and their style and their commitment and their fidelity to what West Sacramento is all about um, that, that, that I think we have to sell, we must celebrate. Mike set the tone as the first mayor with his colleagues about how we would act and what was not appropriate behavior in the city of West Sacramento that we would care only about the future of this community, that we answered to no outside interest groups, uh, that we were gonna pay attention to facts and evidence, but also to our hearts, and that we would bleed West Sac, that that would be the test for any new city council member. We don't actually literally cut people anymore, um, but that we wanna know, do you bleed West Sacramento? You know, Mike had grown up at Capitol Speedway down the street from here. Um, he's, folk, you know, he's the folksy one of us. Uh, the grandson of a mattress maker from Tennessee and a carpenter from Arkansas, and, and whose families had been farmers for generations before coming to California. And he represents the best of us, human, caring, leading, smart, and smart and smarts. Uh, and he's acted with us as though he's the sixth council member. And this, I find, is, the, is unique in the world. I've never been in another government that's like this, where we operate as one. Uh, this, the, uh, Mike, we know if we do something, Mike McGowan will not just back us up, but he will make the county back us up. And he knows that if he needs to do something for the, uh, at the county, that we will uh, stand with him and back him up. I think only once in 20 years has there been a public disagreement between our county supervisor and anything that the city government has done. Once in 20 years. If you go to any other jurisdiction, I guarantee you that is not the case. It might be once in 20 minutes. Once in 20 years. And he was right on that one. That was, our, that was the casino uh, debacle, that, what became Ikea. Um, so uh, what we have is an incredible level of trust and, co and cooperation between our two governments. And, but this, this is not unique to our relationship. This is Mike McGowan. This is the West Sacramento way. And it is why his colleagues from all across California selected him. And remember, this is a group of county supervisors from all of California, perhaps 
the, the most ambitious, uh, self-promoting people that there are. <laughs> Um, choosing Mike McGowan, not, not themselves, but Mike McGowan to lead them uh, is a tremendous uh, vote of confidence, but also a tremendous, tremendous marker of respect for the man and for the community that, re that, that w where he is from and whose values he represents. Uh, the governor uh, doesn't like very many people, but he loves Mike McGowan. Um, and Daryl Steinberg on the other end, the, the state senate uh, president pro tem, who is the intellectual ethereal and loves Mike McGowan. Everyone likes Mike McGowan, and everybody comes to know pretty quickly that Mike McGowan is one of the smartest and most savvy elected officials, in, not just in our community, but in the state. So Mike represents everything um, that is right about West Sacramento and our hope and our promise for what we're going to make even better. Um, and so, uh, Mike, I want to add my, my words to the video. Uh, uh, you're, you know, my brother, uh, my, one of my best friends, um, thank you for everything that you do in our community. So, so we owe a lot to the, those, those leaders uh, who have been at the beginning and many all the way to today. And same thing with the people who have served this city. Uh, employees and staff and volunteer citizens uh, on our commissions who have helped to guide every key decision that's been made al uh, along the way. And I want to acknowledge the volunteer commissioners who are here, but there are many, many others who, in our community who have stepped up to, uh, to help. And our staff. Uh, Toby said we have one of the greatest staff you can imagine, and, and I can't imagine a better one. Uh, and all the, you know, from, from the moment that, that Carol Richardson got on, on Old River Road and moved from, uh, from, Wood, from the County Administration Building in Woodland to here, uh, the tone has been set that this is a place where, you, where talented, energized, uh, engaged, aspirational people come to get something done. Uh, the council promises to usually not interfere or cause too much drama. And in exchange, we've been able to recruit and retain some of the very, very, very best people. And we are extraordinarily lucky as a city uh, to be blessed with, an, with such an incredible line of, of, of uh, staff and employees over these 25 years. And Toby does represent the best of that. Um, and and uh, he, he is calm. He solves. He can solve just about anything. Uh, we have him juggling a million things at a time. When we hired him, we said, we, you know, we might want to do three or four things at a time. Can you handle that? And he says, well, we, let's talk about getting that down to two or three. And, uh, you know, we're probably at 20 or 30 at the moment. Um, Toby is a master at, at administration, but also at understanding without meddling in politics. He inspires his own uh, team, and he inspires people that work with us. Uh, whether they're developers or community leaders or volunteers or folks just trying to solve a problem. He's a great mentor, um, and he has stuck with it through the toughest times. He could have retired a couple of years ago. In fact, there were moments when I know he wanted to, um, after, after the boom. But he said, no, I, this, it's, my, it's not just my responsibility, but I need to be here for the toughest times. And he's used that, his, his, his uh, skills and commitment to constantly, uh, and I'm sorry for those of you who call City Hall and don't know who you're talking to anymore, we're constantly reorganizing, in part because our city manager is committed to making sure that we are able to keep those highly talented, um, committed, uh, inspired staff. And he's been a master at accomplishing that. Um, it should be no surprise, Toby is originally from Porterville, uh, just a few miles away from where Mike McGowan's mom grew up. And uh, his family came there after a little bit of time in Iowa, New York, and, and after two centuries in New England before that. But you actually can trace Toby's roots all the way back to a guy named Joseph Carpenter who came to America in the 17th century from Bristol, England. And Mike's grandfather actually was a carpenter uh, also, but Toby's, uh, this guy in Toby's ancestral line was born as one of the very first carpenters to hit American soil. But what's remarkable is that uh, Joseph Carpenter, Toby's uh, great, great, several great uh, grandfathers, was one of the first 58 settlers to found one of the very first incorporated towns in Massachusetts. And in the 1640s and 50s, he served on the town council and then became uh, what was called then the proprietor's clerk, which today we would call city manager. So city management is in Toby's DNA for centuries. And he is 
a city manager, city manager, a city manager, rock star. I, if you, if you uh, follow these sorts of things and you see when Toby goes to a campus to give a lecture, the flyers that go up among the city manager and city planning uh, departments, the students come out as though, you know, Van Halen or Rush or, you know, some <laughs> M&M or somebody is coming to, to the campus. It's quite remarkable. Um, so, of course, Toby doesn't, he doesn't do it alone. He introduced Joe already and he met, you know, this French Scottish woman from Texas and uh, who has, in her own right, made tremendous contributions to the vitality and spirit of our community. Thank you, Joe. Joe is not retiring and so we will, we will continue to enjoy uh, her civic uh, contributions. I do want to say, though, that there will be life after Toby Ross. There, it, there will be life after any one of us. Uh, and this became, this is something we, we've all thought about on, at City Council quite a bit over this last year as we've worried about, uh, as many of you read in the newspaper last year, Mike's um, successful struggle uh, on, on a health matter to try to, to stay in the game. Mike said, I'm not going until we get the, you know, we get what we need in West Sacramento. And Toby, uh, with Toby's retirement, we've thought a lot about these challenges of how do we assure that these, these, at these, uh, our successes continue. And we still have a tremendous staffing. Carol and Carol Richardson, Bill Kristoff, who were here when we incorporated, they're still here. Um, and so, let me just say, we, we have launched, a, we, the City Council has launched a national search for a new city manager, and uh, we are very confident that thanks to the work that Toby has done and the work that all of you have done to make this an attractive place for a city manager to be, uh, that we will be successful in recruiting the highest quality of city manager uh, to take us into a, into a new era. So Toby, thank you very, very much, uh, and uh, look forward to additional celebrations to come. So, the... So it was those everyday leaders, it's been our staff, but it's been mainly the people in this community, the citizens uh, who volunteer, who work the, show up at the farmer's market and are behind the booth or buying stuff from the booth, folks in the Chamber of Commerce, folks in the Rotary Club, in the Faith Community, in the Brighton Broderick Action Group, entrepreneurs like Farm Fresh to You who are creating new things all together, Rayleigh Field that came out of nowhere, Ikea that, that injected all this uh, new energy into the community. It is the people and businesses that make this community happen. The city government, we're here just to facilitate and to try to encourage and to support and to cut some of the brush away so that you can make a vital and exciting place to be. And we thank you uh, for, for the leadership that, that, you, that you provide in our community. I also want to say thanks to the, our partners at the county and the and this region and the state and the federal level who have been uh, critical in, in making this, uh, this, these 25 years work whether it was on the Palomanesi Bridge, which was one of the first projects that Vic, Congressman Vic Fazio helped us get resources for to open up and, and make Southport possible. The County Service Center that Mike McGowan and Thomas Dollar fought hard to locate here to consolidate uh, many of the public services that the county provides here in the city. But consistently, support from Vic Fazio and Mike Thompson and Barbara Boxer and, and Diane Feinstein and sometimes the White House on our projects has been critical uh, to being able to deliver the kinds of programs and infrastructure that have made West Sacramento what it is today. And, I, and I'm not going uh, a night without mentioning redevelopment. I already did once. And uh, the, the ability that we have had for the last 25 years to borrow against that hope, to bond against that hope, to say, we know if we clean up this toxic brownfield. We know if we uh, are able to consolidate these parcels and make it something that somebody could build something on. We know if we build a sidewalk that we can improve the value of property and that will generate more taxes. If only we could have a mechanism to be able to borrow against that, borrow against those future taxes now in order to make the improvements. Because so many poor places have been unable to turn themselves around because they could not get the capital to make those improvements that would potentially, um, and in our case for sure, make them vital places. We have. Redevelopment worked uh, and it, it made it possible for us to achieve virtually everything in this community. No significant project, no great place in this community uh, that is on the ground today would be there were it not for redevelopment. And uh, so I, I don't want you to forget um, the impact that it has had. Uh, we will not be returned to a community service district despite the loss of redevelopment. Um, uh, and, uh, uh, there, but but I, the sad part, the tragedy, is that there will never be another West Sacramento. Uh, it just cannot be done without the, with the participation of everyone, including the state of California, in turning around the most depressed communities. So there won't be another one of us, but there will be us. We now can stand on our own two feet. Um, we now have become a city with the resources and the capacity to be able to chart our own destiny, and so we will. 
And things like the Tower Bridge Gateway Project that we just opened up this year, and the Riverfront Trail, the Bridge District, an increasingly robust civic sector with Rotary and Habitat and the Chamber and others really uh, starting to build the civic infrastructure on the nonprofit side as well. We are becoming, uh, we are developing the tools that we need in order to make it on our own. And I want to thank Councilmember Chris Ledesma and the Chamber of Commerce and, the, and Jack Enos and others who are in the room who participated in the, uh, our post-redevelopment options uh, working group, our strike team, to figure out what do we do after redevelopment. Um, and they, put, they prepared uh, an, a, a very detailed, sobering, and ambitious plan for what we do next um, in, in, uh, as, we move, as we move away from, from an era of redevelopment. And they put a lot of hard work and the city council uh, unanimously endorsed their recommendations and we're moving forward. And what they've done is given us a head start. We are farther along than virtually any other community in the state uh, around, uh, what, uh, around the tools that we're now gonna deploy and the strategies that will replace redevelopment. And so for those of, the, those of you that have money to invest, we're the, we, we have the head start, we're the early adopter, we're ready to go today in a post-redevelopment world. That we'll be focused on innovation, where we'll be focusing on our ability to facilitate deals. We, we can't be the kind of brute force catalyst that we have in some places in the past. We won't be able to say, here's, tw here's $12 million of our money that we're gonna be able to make something happen. We're gonna have to rely more on facilitating private capital and, and other sources from other levels of government, um, but we will be there. We're moving more of our services online, and not just the police department, not just the parks department, but, but uh, more and more of our development services as well. We'll be looking at the infrastructure financing districts and other community investment options that are, that are already out there. We don't have the slack that we once had. With no tax increment, uh, I, I, I need to tell you right now, for those of you in the private sector, coming to City Hall and saying, um, I need you to waive all my development fees because uh, it would be nice. We can't do it. We cannot do. We couldn't do that before. We cannot do that today. Uh, there's no slack in our general fund budget, and we have no redevelopment funds. And so, uh, we all have to be quick on our feet. And I and I'm I'm confident from our own staff team, from the work that this working group has done, and from our private partners, um, landowners, and others in the community that we will do it. It's already happening. Uh, we're moving to construction on two housing projects right now. We're building four new parks. Now remember, that's as many as we had uh, just before incorporation. And I'm not going to say that this coming year is going to bring that Marriott Hotel to the waterfront. I'm not going to say that we are going to you know, build movie theaters. I'm not going to say that there are going to be pioneering projects built next to and inside the bridge district. But I'm also not saying it won't happen. Um, it's, uh, and, and based on our record, I wouldn't bet against uh, West Sacramento as, uh, as, we, as we move into, the, into 2013. But we're going to spend, uh, and, and uh, I've mentioned our 25th anniversary, and you have your uh, collateral at your, at your tables, and we are going to celebrate this year. Uh, it'll be West Sacramento style, which is we're celebrating our 25th, 25th anniversary on our way to building something new. So you will not see a year where that's all we do is have lots and lots of retrospectives. But we want to acknowledge the, the, where we have come, and we want particularly our, some of our newer residents to know the history and the heritage of the place in which they are. So we are going to be, uh, we are announcing a video contest uh, for the 25th anniversary where we're inviting uh, uh, residents and, and, and uh, employees and others, visitors to our city to submit videos uh, showing West Sacramento is a place to live, work, and play. Also be encouraging folks to submit videos that are oral histories of life before incorporation and after. But you can go all the way and do the Marine Pasco style music videos about West Sacramento. Uh, we want to encourage um, uh, a moment of celebration throughout the community. I'm going to be uh, asking the members of the city, a couple members of the city council, the Parks Commission, and the Arts and Historic Preservation Commission to, to come together as part of a heritage task force. We, have, uh, we traditionally have not named anything in our community after people, except on an ad hoc basis. And this is the year to pay attention to making sure that we don't lose some of the major names of people in our community who have made a difference. I am going to be asking the city council to uh, waive one of our rules about having to be, um, having had to have passed away to have a name given to you because I believe it's, it, is the, it is appropriate first to acknowledge uh, Toby Ross uh, with a facility of civic importance and significance in our community. Um, 
we will be celebrating the 10th anniversary of our sister city relationship with the city of Alaminos in the Philippines, and, the one, and we are celebrating the 100th anniversary of the I Street Bridge, which will also be a celebration of our connection to our city across the river. Uh, and so as, as these celebrations emerge, they will, you can find them on the city's website at cityofwestsacramento.org slash 25, uh, but we're looking forward to a great 2012 as celebration. Let me turn to flood protection for just a moment because it is the most critical issue uh, in our community and because before Denise gave her introduction of Sam Shane, I know his bio says that one of the things he's the most proud of is his exposés about politicians in 2007 who didn't pay enough attention to flood protection, so I'm, I'm covering it. Um, flood protection is, uh, and I thought we were going to have rain tonight, I thought it would be a much more dramatic moment. We are not because t the Chamber of Commerce insists on having sun um, all the time. But flood, uh, the, the threat of flooding still remains a significant issue for our community despite um, the fact that we have not had an event in, in over a century. And I j just for the briefest of updates, we are continuing our work with the federal government to complete it's called our general reevaluation report, uh, which is necessary for the major federal investments in our levy system and other uh, me measures for flood control. Uh, we are engaged in a deep pitched fight to make sure that, the, uh, that our ability to credit the local investments that we in the state of California have made will continue to count so that we can keep our local flood protection program on track. And yesterday uh, uh, with Senator Feinstein, we made that, we made that uh, strong case and she is on our side and so is uh, Congresswoman Doris Matsui and Congressman Mike Thompson and, and, and many others in the administration, so we're hopeful in that regard. FEMA the, 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 uh, is, is uh, working on changes that are pending now at the agency level at the Department of Homeland Security to fix some of the problems with their mapping criteria and the impacts that mapping would have in our community. And then most importantly, because those are all regulatory and bureaucratic issues, is we are actually fixing and improving and strengthening levies. And we are uh, currently working on a major Southport project that if we are able to accomplish it, and it is a massive uh, project which would be done with with virtually no federal involvement. It's a massive project. If we are able to get it done, we will have accomplished just about half of our entire flood pr protection program. Remember that that's the half a nearly half a billion dollar flood protection program that we embarked on post Katrina, and that halfway point is a critical marker for uh, f for FEMA mapping purposes. And so uh, we will continue to be fully transparent about where we are and the progress that we're making on this. But this remains, even though we, it's not in the newspaper every day, this remains the highest priority for the city of Sacramento, uh, city of West Sacramento. Now, since I flubbed up and just said the city of Sacramento, let me get to it. The arena. Uh, and Sam mentioned this as well, and I, I, I have to say this every year in the speech because I keep getting asked, and so do my colleagues on the council, why doesn't West Sac do the arena? Why isn't, the, why isn't it a West Sacramento arena for the Kings? Now, beyond the obvious reasons why we are not building a $400 million arena, um, <laughs> let me make it absolutely clear. The downtown entertainment and sports complex is a West Sacramento arena. Uh, it's, it's within blocks of here. It's actually closer to our city hall than to theirs. It is a way, the notion that that is like somewhere far away is, 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 is ridiculous. And so what we've been working on together as a region is to accomplish this facility. And it is in our interest as a community to have it be located proximate to us and to the downtown for the region. And it's why, as Sam said, we have been working co collaboratively with the city of Sacramento and others in the region in order to make that happen. It, uh, it, it matters because uh, you know, people live and work and play on both sides of the river together. The only ones who care about these governmental distinctions mainly are us in government. But for most people, that isn't how it is. Right? The, I was at NorCal Beverage, which is one of our most important employers here in the city of West Sacramento, celebrated its, <laughs> celebrated its 75th anniversary earlier this year. And at uh, their celebration dinner, you could, it was quite apparent there are more than a couple employees at NorCal Beverage who are, live in the city of Sacramento. In fact, a majority of their employees are from the city of Sacramento, not from the city of West Sacramento. But one of our signature companies would not exist without those, those workers. Uh, by the same token, thousands of West Sacramentans in the morning get up and commute to jobs in Sacramento. Or they go to a movie in Sacramento and Sacramentans come here to go bowling or to go to a River Cats game or to pick up uh, you know, some great furniture at Ikea. Our lives are intertwined. The notion that, that uh, well, who cares about Sacramento's levees as long as we build ours? Well, that might sound fine to you. Now that I have an, uh, an exchange student son for a year, if we're at the movies in Atomas and the levee breaks, 
and Atomus is flooded and life, lives are put at risk. I don't want that to be me and him, and neither do you. Uh, we want uh, our, our urban area to, has to function together. And so this, I, I want to break down this kind of ridiculous notion that the river is a real hard line between our communities. It matters. I don't want to suggest that it doesn't. We are still competing vigorously with Sacramento over lots and lots of projects. But that competition exists within this space of commonality and the fact that our lives are lived on both sides of the river. And it matters because our economic competitiveness depends on us functioning effectively together. We're not, our main fight is not going to be with the city of Sacramento about whether our people have jobs, whether our people are able to avoid foreclosures, whether we're going to be economic, economically prosperous. It's going to be that city in China that just built a port in like seven minutes um, is, that is 100 times bigger than our port. That's the fight. That's the battle. And if our region were a state on its own, just this Sacramento region, our economy would be bigger than the economies of New Hampshire, New Mexico, Montana, North Dakota, Vermont, South Dakota, Arkansas, Delaware, Indiana, Maryland, Rhode Island, West Virginia, Hawaii, Nebraska. We're a big region, and we have to act like we're a global player. If our region were a country, it'd be bigger than Libya. Our economy is bigger than Tunisia, it's bigger than Syria, it's bigger than North Korea, it's bigger than Cuba, it's bigger than Guatemala, it's even bigger than Luxembourg and Anaheim. We are a powerhouse <laughs> on the international scene and we have to act like it. And there was a time when we didn't have to, we didn't have to, that was the job of Sacramento. Ladies and gentlemen, with the port, with our economic base, our job base, with our strength, we have responsibility for regional leadership in the economy and we have to lead. Um, and so, and we see this uh, uh, th throughout, throughout our work together. And so I'm happy to report that this year we've seen significant movement with our partners in Sacramento on key common projects, like additional bridges across the river, like the streetcar, where we have reached agreement on an alignment, uh, and where, an agreement on, th on the river itself. And, I, and I'm, I'm thrilled, and last night we hosted, Mike McGowan and I hosted Congresswoman Doris Matsui, uh, Roger Dickinson is here, and Daryl Steinberg uh, this morning. We now share uh, elected officials in the state legislature and in the Congress that can help us work together to strengthen us, our, our, our common interests, while continuing to compete about, about things like IKEA. So uh, we're, we're going to make this happen, and I do want to say, just on the streetcar, that Sacramento, in addition to approving a, the alignment, has approved real money. They now have real skin in the game through regional transit, and we're looking forward to bringing that project across the finish line. Now, last year in this same speech, I announced that we were going to be pursuing an initiative about becoming the Silicon Valley of food. Uh, and I said, you know, with our position in between the state capital, with its policy and regulatory uh, focus on the, on the, in the areas of food, uh, you know, things like uh, policies about genetic modification or organic standards or whether food trucks can be parked next to schools, whatever the issue is, California is in many ways on the cutting edge of that and people who care about regulatory and legal policy about food want to be here and in this region. UC Davis, the number one uh, a, a university in the nation for agriculture, ecology, the environment, food science and nutrition. <laughs> right, right next door. Um, our valley that we sit in, uh, including the Cape Valley, is the most productive agricultural region in the world. Um, that we sit right in the center of so many of the important streams around food, the connections between production, research, innovation, distribution, um, consumerism, uh, and the whole foodie movement, we are right in the middle of it. And shame on us if we don't take advantage of what ought to be the critical economic cluster for us moving forward. Clarksburg is already setting that example as a, as a place that's transitioning to high value crops and other spin-offs. And so th we, we announced this last year and we've been busy ever since getting it done. Uh, Secretary Vilsack was out here as uh, was mentioned in the video. The Secretary, U.S. Secretary of Agriculture was here as part of that effort and the, the Farm Fresh Dew folks blew him away. The opening of Nippon Shoken, which I think is the inspiration for the Mai Tai um, umbrellas above me. Uh, Nippon Shoken, the new uh, Japanese sauce maker, which is the largest uh, food and uh, sauce and spice maker in Japan, opening its U.S. Um, manufacturing facilities, distribution center, and headquarters right here in West Sacramento, is an example of why we can be a major player in that regard. They wanted our distribution system, our access to transportation, and our proximity to UC Davis. Uh, Supervisor McGowan, as was mentioned, is, was in China on a trip there, and they're interested in getting our wine, and we're, interesting to se we're interested in sending it to them. Uh, the marine highway that we are constructing uh, with the ports of Oakland and, and Stockton will facilitate this as well, in moving food back and forth between our community and region and the rest of the world. 
NorCal Beverage, uh, not just in terms of, of uh, its traditional lines of business, but things like Go Girl, which many, many folks don't know was created right here in West Sacramento. Um, <laughs> is another example of, of the distribution sector. Uh, Farm Fresh to You, as we've, uh, as we've awarded this evening, is a major player in this regard in, in both what it does, but also in the innovation and the connectedness between these policies and uh, food policy and health policy on the ground. Uh, we, uh, Kaiser is here, and they'll, they'll be making an announcement soon, but we're very committed with their help uh, to additional uh, initiatives in the healthy, in healthy eating and active living arena, and so look for an announcement about that soon. We've got places like the West Sacramento Farmers Market, which are bringing food and farmers and people back together again. Dave's Pumpkin Patch, which is like the Disneyland of, of uh, agriculture down during the, during the October and fall season. Uh, um, the food trucks that we will be, I think we will be the first urban city in the region to adopt a, a food truck friendly ordinance as well. The opening of the eatery, the, the, the commitment of places like Wicked West to fully organic local foods. Carol's restaurant is going crazy across the street. The, this, we are becoming a center of food and we need to grab it by the horns. And so what we're going to be doing over the next couple of months is we're going to convene a, a summit here at City Hall of folks from all these sectors together, where we're gonna try to chart, as part of our own next economy effort, what this can look like and how we can make, bring it to reality. We know we can, we've done tougher things in the past, but making this the heart of a Silicon Valley of food is gonna be a major initiative in the coming year. So our ancestors in 1987 uh, laid down the expectations and the standards by which West Sacramento has done its work ever since. And that 72% vote for incorporation and the broad community consensus that it represented has never faltered. All, virtually every ballot proposition, every election, this community has held together across the board with the same principles over and over again. Community first, long run, no BS, despite my college degree, pragmatic, just get it done. Uh, and in fact, today, uh, since I'm, uh, I'm a social media guy, I tweeted that uh, I have this tweet. People of West Sac, please suspend all progress for just two hours, please. It is almost impossible for me to finish the state of the city outline when I'm, when I'm being bombarded all day with new $150,000 grants, statewide awards, and applications for new businesses. Don't you people ever rest? That was my tweet. And what was, what was uh, so thoroughly West Sac was the responses that I got back which were not, how could you say that, or I'm not, and now I'm gonna run against you, none of that. It was, because I said, could you please suspend progress for just two hours? Nope was one, nah was the next one, never was the next, just very pragmatic answers. No, we have no intention of resting even for two hours. This progress ain't stopping. So to the incorporation committee, you were right, and we are grateful. Happy birthday, West Sacramento.